Okay, but if they see sex in the city, then are they still off the list? No, if they see sex in the city the first weekend, I have nothing to do with them. You wouldn't have any women today. All right, good luck. You've had a hard time as it is already. Time now for another edition of the G Note, hotter than a steamy soap opera. Hey, hot sex is not usually associated with finding renewable sources of energy, but it's a literal orgy under the microscope of my next guest who's hot on the trail of what could be the next big thing for fuel. Who knew algae was so sexy and could be a solution to our dependence on Middle East oil? Joining me now, he is the CEO of Valcent Products, Glenn Kurtz. Welcome to Happy Hope Hour. Boy, they, you know, as I was looking at this, I was like, algae? You know, I know that's that pond scum that we see everywhere, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. That's the type of algae you're talking that's about? That's what we're talking about. Pond so, scum, rock snot, pick a name. <laughs> So, Glenn, this is going to be the solution potentially for our energy problems. Tell us why. Well, there, there's if you look at alternative fuels, there's uh, solar power, wind power. Most of these things push electrons around. Okay. Uh, the reality is our, our global economy is still powered off the internal combustion engine. So we've got to find an alternative for pulling up fossil fuel. And the reality is if you've been in a car or a plane, any type of con internal combustion engine, you're running off algae already, the stuff that was laid down millions of years ago. Uh, a single cell of algae will have 50 to 70 percent of its body weight in a high-grade vegetable oil. Really? And we can convert that vegetable oil into fuel. So now, when I was reading about this, the government had actually looked into a research yes. of algae as a source of energy uh, years ago, but uh, they stopped the research. Why? And now why this new sudden interest again? Well, one, we had a change in administration, but when oil was $40 a barrel, uh, the incentive wasn't really there. It was easy to just go out and dig a hole in the ground and pull it up. But now at 100 plus, okay, with a little bit of backtracking, uh, the interest is there, uh, and we think that we can do it where we're cost competitive with traditional fossil fuels. Okay, and so what are the uh, the pros and the cons? Because there's always a pro and con in everything, and people are yes. worried about global warming, the pollution, and then the cost factor. Well, one of the pros is obviously that, that uh, even though when we burn this fuel, we're releasing carbon, we're recycling the carbon. So we capture the carbon, put it into the, the fuel, uh, we burn the fuel, we release the carbon. So it's a, a recyclable, renewable resource. Okay. Uh, the con is the fact that the capital equipment cost you know, is considerable. So it's expensive to set it up to get it operational. I mean, how much, is, for example, algae do you have to have to, say, run a car? You well, know, let me give you... Back and forth, you know, let, from let me, let me give you the, the, the comparison is the same on a barrel of oil, okay? But if, if we look at, uh, to give you some idea what we're shooting for, if we took one-tenth of the state of New Mexico from a land area standpoint and we converted that into algae production, we could potentially power all of the vehicles in the United States. How far are you from actually us using algae to fill up our cars? Well, I think we're 18 to 24 months to being at the pilot stage to really prove the concept and then maybe a couple of years after that we'll actually be pumping our, our gas. What happens if oil then drops again to, uh, you know, say 75 bucks a barrel? Then uh, do you I, encounter I, I, a problem? No, I think we're still competitive at that price. And do you have any government support? You know, that's like the big thing that did all these tax breaks for oil companies. Are they helping we're, companies we're, like we're yours? We're working on that, but the bulk of the money that's come into this this play have been from private investors. All right. Well, co continue success and good Thank luck you to much. you because I know we definitely need some uh, alternatives we're out there. working it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good Pleasure. to meet you. Glenn Kurtz, he's the CEO of Valcent Products. All right.